All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So the the way I the way I figure this is that at this point, um, I gave out like the averages last time, right? So I kind of had to make a call here um, with drop date and everything coming up. Basically, looked at everyone's grades, said if you had anything below a 78, I dropped you from the class, thinking that it's just going to get harder. It's probably not worth your effort. So, ah, you got me. All right. <laughs> I was going to stop as soon as I got rushed, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do the quizzes April Fools, but uh yeah. Um I, I saw some looks. I'm like oh, Questions over homework. All right. Which one? What Seven what what? The num the number five. All right, I'm being asked to discuss number five on seven point five. Seven point four, thank you. Uh, where is it? Wait a minute. Number five? Okay. Set up an integral that represents the length of the curve, and then use your calculator to find the, the length correct to four decimal places. So x equals square root of y minus y on the interval 1 to 4, right? My handwriting has been way off today. That's the one, right? Well, the first thing is to try and get a picture of, of what this looks like. Were you able to do that or no? Yeah. You did? Okay. So you use your parametric plot feature? Okay. Um, I know if y is 0, x is 0. I'm just picking some points here. If y is 1, x is what? 0, right? I'm just plugging in some values here just to try and get an idea of what this looks like. Right, so here. Um, let's pick something else, something a little more interesting. How about if y is 4, x is negative 2. I'm going to change this. So here's at 1. If y is 4, 2, 3, 4, x is negative 2, somewhere over here. And then do you have the picture? I don't want to do the whole thing. Looks sort of parabolic. Yeah. yeah. OK. So it goes something like this. Oh my goodness. Like this. Something like that. And you want the arc length from 1 to 4, which would mean we're looking at just this piece right here. It's y equals 1 to 4, right? Not x equals 1 to 4. So just that part right there. You want to know how long that is. Yes? Now, the only formula that I gave you in class was this one. It was integral from A to B, right? Square root 1 plus what? The derivative of F prime or, you know, derivative of F squared dx, right? And that's all. I only gave you that one example. So I never did one where our function was a function of Y instead of a function of X, hoping that you would be able to extrapolate the idea 
and figure out what the formula would be or to reference the book. So did, what formula did you use? Did you just modify this a little bit? Did anyone try this? Did you just switch to f prime of y? Yeah, you just go f prime of y, dy, and go c to d. So it's, it's the same thing. It's, you know, you're switching variables. So we're going to go integral from, say again, was there a question? 1 to 4. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? My red went too far, didn't it? I'm supposed to go from 1 to 4, not from 0 to 4. Let me get rid of that red. Crap. What would be y? Yes, yes. Uh huh. So we should be going in here from, from here to here, something like that. Okay, so it would be integral from 1 to 4, square root of... 1 plus, I'm going to say, I'm going to use g prime of y because the book has always used g whenever they're using functions of y instead of x. So what's my function of y here? What's g of y? It's root y minus y. So I need the derivative of that. What's g prime y? 1 over 2 root y minus 1, and I'm going to need to square that. So let me, let me go ahead and do that here also. g prime y squared means take 1 over 2 root y minus 1 and square it, which means foil it out. So what do you get when you multiply that times itself? So 1 over... I'll do, I'll do it so we can go a little slower. 1 over 2 root y minus 1 times 1 over 2 root y minus 1. So we get 1 over 4y, that's the first terms, minus a 1 over 2 root y minus a 1 over 2 root y plus 1. Then I can collect my middle terms together. Right? They have the same denominator, so I'm going to get negative 2 of those, and then I can cancel the 2s. So I get 1 over 4y minus 1 over root y plus 1. Is that all right? Anyone have a question on that? Now we have to go plug it into the integral and... Yeah, that was just the that was just the g prime y squared. Yeah. Okay. Did you have that up to that? Okay. So you're good. It's going to be the algebra in these that gets tough. Okay. So I'm I'm at integral one to four, square root, one plus one over four y minus one over root y plus one dy. I can combine the ones together, right, and get a 2. And then what you should always do with these problems, when, when you're looking at these, and I mean, this is a pretty nasty integral right here, as it sits, is to get a common denominator, try and make it one big fraction underneath the root. All right, that's kind of like the standard protocol. If it's not an integral, you're, you know what to do with right away. So let me rewrite it first. It's going to be 2 plus 1 over 4y minus 1 over root y dy. So what would my common denominator be here? What could I use? I could use, if I'm trying to clear all these fractions out, or not clear them, if I'm trying to get them all to be the same, I could make them all turn into 4 y's, right? So let me try that. Integral 1 to 4 square root. What would I have to multiply the 2 by on top and bottom? It's like a 2 over 1, right? So multiply top and bottom by 4y. So I get 8y plus, now, do I have to do anything on this one? No. So 1 minus, now what do I have to multiply top and bottom here by to get a 4y on the bottom? 4 root y. All over. 
All over? What? 4y, common denominator, right? dy. All right. So at this point, can I clean anything up in the numerator? I mean, you can't really combine any of that together, right? Denominator, no? You wouldn't want to split this back into single terms, right? Because that's where we came from. You can do the root of the top and bottom separately, but that doesn't really help, does it? If I do the root of the top over the root of the bottom, can't take the square root either way, correct? I mean, I, if I do the square root on the top, I can't break that up because it's three different terms. On the bottom, square root of 4y, you can do 2 root y. That's about it, right? So do you remember, it's been a long time, but do you remember last Wednesday what, what happened was when we did this, the denominator was a perfect square and the numerator was a perfect square trinomial and it factored. Do you all remember that? It's, that's, that's what happened last time. Let me see. March, 20. there it is right there. That's what we had last class. So we had this up top, that up top factored to be this, didn't it? And then we did square root of top and bottom separately, and it turned out to be a nice, right? This one does not appear to be working out that nice, does it? Okay. So... Is there anything we could do to make this on the bottom be a perfect square? Is there anything I could do to make that so when I took the square of the bottom, it would be something nice? If it was y squared? So could I multiply top and bottom by y? Could I? Sure. Just in here, go top and bottom y. Just see what happens. Integral 1, 4, square root, top by y, bottom by y. You could pull the 4 out of the root. Is that what you're saying? The 4 square root y, can you pick up to the bottom side? Can you make it? Yeah, but then you'd be back up to this. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Let's see what happens. If I multiply the top by y, we get this. And the bottom, we get 4y squared, don't we? dy. All that allows me to do now is what? Square root top and bottom separately, right? But does that help? Let's see. Square root of the top is 8y squared plus y minus 4y square root of y all over the denominator. Square root of the denominator is 2y dy. Still no good, right? Right. Okay. Is there anything we can do up here to try and make this, like, is, can we make it look like perfect squared trinomial? Is that where you're stuck on this? You got pretty much to this? Yeah. Okay. Is there a way on, on either this one here or this one up here? Is there anything you can do here? Let me, let me write something down here. Let me take that. We'll take the one in the yellow first, and then we'll work with this one if we need to. What was it? 8 plus, sorry, 8y plus 1 minus 4 root y. Isn't that what it is? Is that a perfect square trinomial? Think, think about it. Think, think, think about it. Well, like this. If I wrote x squared minus 3x plus or uh, minus 4, could you factor that? Yes. I mean, that's a trinomial you could factor, right? Perfect square would mean the same thing times itself. So it would be like x plus 2 times x plus 2. Is a perfect when you multiply it, 
You get. Is that the same? Sorry, this is real sloppy. I don't know why. I'm, I'm not handwriting sucks today. Square root of y squared is the same as y, isn't it? Yes. So this right here, if you squint your eyes hard enough, if you make a substitution, m is root y, doesn't that look like 8m squared minus 4m plus 1? Yes. Doesn't it? So I can break it up to be 4m, 4m, what? No, not 4. What is it? 2. Will, will it factor? But the, the idea, though, the idea is what I want you to see here, all right? is that can you break this oops can you break this thing down to be something times something do you see what i did though i mean okay